This video will demonstrate deploying Red Hat OpenShift to Nutanix AOS, including using the certified operator for Nutanix CSI integration. The install config.yaml follows the recommendations for bare metal user provisioned infrastructure, with worker node replicas set to zero and platform of none. As a result, we will need to generate the installer manifest first to set the control plane nodes to not be schedulable. Once modified, generate the ignition files for installation and host them on a web server accessible to the virtual machines. The next step is to create the virtual machines themselves and install Red Hat Enterprise Linux CoreOS. Each VM will have a recommended amount of CPU, memory, and disk. Please refer to the documentation for specific guidance. The CoreOS installation will be done using the live ISO method. We add that image as the first disk to the virtual machines. Afterward, attach the OS disk and appropriate network, then complete the VM creation wizard. If not automatically done, power on the virtual machine and allow it to boot to the live ISO. From the console, we will be configuring the network for a static IP using NMCLI, or NM2E. If you're using DHCP, this step is not necessary. Once the network has been configured, install CoreOS using the command line, transferring the network configuration to the local disk. The install will take a few moments to copy data to the disk, after which the virtual machine can be powered off and the ISO device detached. Repeat these steps for all other nodes in the cluster. When complete, power on all the nodes to begin the OpenShift deployment. Install progress is monitored using the OpenShift install command, first waiting for the bootstrap process to complete. Once Bootstrap is done, power off the Bootstrap virtual machine and optionally destroy it. The worker nodes will need to have their certificate signing requests approved in order to join the cluster, so we will approve them when they are visible from the OC git csr command, which may take a few minutes. There will be two CSRs for each node joining the cluster, one after the other, that will need to be approved. Once they are approved, the worker nodes join the cluster and we can monitor for the install to complete. When finished, the console link and kubeadmin password will be printed to the screen. The next step is to use the Nutanix CSI operator to configure storage integration. Begin by logging into the OpenShift administrator console using the credentials provided by the installer. Once logged in, browse to the operator hub and search for Nutanix. Install the operator, creating a namespace for the components to deploy to.
After the operator deploys, we need to create an instance of the operand, which will then deploy the components of the CSI provisioner to the nodes of the cluster. To configure the provisioner, we first need to create a secret, which has the connection information for the underlying AOS platform, followed by a storage class defining the characteristics to be provided to storage consumers. To verify functionality, we are creating a 100 GB persistent volume claim using the newly created storage class. Once bound, we can verify that the persistent volumes ID matches the volume created via the Nutanix Prism Element Manager interface. Finally, we'll configure the integrated OpenShift registry to use the newly created persistent volume claim by modifying the appropriate object. Thank you for watching this video showing OpenShift deployed and integrated with Nutanix AOS.